Hello, my name is Milton Knight, and uh, I am doing commentary for some episodes here of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, let's see. I uh, first, I, I have been cartooning for many years, doing print illustration and comic books. And, uh, well, let's see. I came out uh, to uh, L.A., about, uh, well, 1992, didn't know where I was going to work. Uh, and frankly, I wasn't much caring because I wanted to see the place first. Uh, but on the third day um, I was in LA, uh, I went to visit a friend of mine, Mike Kazala, who was animating uh, on, uh, let's see, at Ralph Bakshi's Cool World. I went there to visit my friend. I had met Ralph back in New York, but, uh, oh, this is uh, Tales' new home, which I uh, did some storyboarding on, did a little bit of gag writing. But uh, I, uh, let's see, yeah, I was uh, went to visit my friend. I had met Ralph Bakshi in California. I'd actually done a couple of, uh, like, pre-production drawings for Cool World. And when I went to a studio, he uh, wanted to hire me right then and there to work on it. And, uh, well, I wanted some time, but it just happened, and so I did. I worked there for six months, and Kent Butterworth was uh, one of the uh, uh, animation directors. And when that, sh that uh, feature was finished, cool, well, when it was done... Uh, can, well, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I uh, was out of work, pleasantly so, and then I got a call from Archie Comics, who wanted me to, uh, the editor wanted me to work on uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book that, that Archie was doing. I had never heard of Sonic the Hedgehog, but uh, I uh, got the stuff and I did a cover. Uh, but it was objected to as being too animated looking. So that didn't happen. But a couple of days later, two, three days later, uh, Kent Butterworth, who was uh, like was an animation director at Cool World, called me up and asked me to work on uh, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, I did doing, uh, at, at first, the first uh, thing I did over there was uh, working on the pilot. I uh, am not entirely sure of uh, what the pilot was for. Um, the show seemed to be sold already, uh, but uh, like may maybe they wanted something for advertisers, whatever. So uh, when I was there, uh, let's see, I uh, designed Robotnik. I, uh, I don't recall whether it was uh, the, the, the serious Robotnik had come first. I. I kind of doubt it, but uh, other people seem to know this stuff better than I do. Um, anyway, I did that. I uh, animated on the pilot episode, and I wrote gags on it, too. And uh, so, in these capacities, storyboarding, a little bit of design, and uh, let's see, a uh, little bit of gag writing... I uh, worked on uh, this program for uh, about six months, and then, uh, you know, the job was over, and it was, you know, time to go on to other things. But, uh, let's see, the reason I was uh, hired for this particular episode, a storyboard for this, is because Kent uh, felt that uh, I had a sense of the sentimental and uh, the old-fashioned, corny, sentimental. And he gave this to me. And uh, so, so I did it. It was like half of the program. Uh, it, it was the, uh, the latter half, not this. I had nothing to do with this. Um, I don't know who did. Uh, let's see. One of the other guys. Uh, but I should mention that uh, Scratch and Grounder were designed by Gary Paul Terry over there. 
And uh, let's see if there's anything else I can tell you. We'll just see what happens because I'm not familiar with these episodes at all. Uh, frankly, I would just watch uh, the halves I worked on and uh, that was it. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, that gag wasn't, didn't come off as well as it should. It was uh, possibly lettered by someone who didn't know English. Uh, uh, because uh, the lettering was so messy. In any case, it was badly staged, and the uh, fish was in front of the uh, the note. And also, he continually moved uh, while he was holding the note, which really wasn't necessary, but uh, at that time, they didn't go much for stuff standing still. Uh, everything had to be moving because they felt that that was quality. And here we, uh, we have water, which uh, used to be avoided by television animators because, you know, it's it's a job. But uh, they they managed to do it. We got the fish going bye-bye. Uh, that may be an Eddie Fitzgerald gag. I'm, I'm, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the house flooding and uh, hat. Hat. And, uh, you know, okay, everything's fine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, was, it was a fun job. Uh, we, we, we got the backgrounds here. Uh, they were uh, trying to go stylized with the backgrounds. You see the sort of watercolor, ink blocked uh, stuff. And uh, let's see. Okay, he's in front of some sort of castle, fortress here. Uh, the clouds in the background, the zigzag clouds, uh, may have been inspired by uh, the comic strip Crazy Cat by George Harriman. And uh, Kent really went in for the simple, broad shapes and uh, contrasts. And... Uh, you know, he was coming from, uh, I, I believe, the, the Astro Boy and uh, Colonel Bleep aesthetic, which uh, was to be very, uh, very broad and, you know, very blunt kind of shapes. And we got the, uh, the background with the uh, spots on it, uh, the watercolor effect. And... Uh, See more zigzags and uh, horizons, and Sonic and uh, Tails are uh, sweating and tired. This uh, this army sergeant, uh, you know, is, is uh, I don't know, treating them mean. Oh, oh, let's see explosions. There's more, more of the effects on the background. And uh, different people designed uh, different characters on this, so you'll see a, a, a contrast in the way they look. I mean, this guy is uh, rather traditional looking, as uh, opposed to, uh, to Sonic and Tails. And uh, yeah, yeah, Sonic uh, was based on a video game, uh, and uh, it worked somehow, this... Uh, came together and became an entertainment program that uh, people still remember. And uh, Chili Dogs, uh, Kent Butterworth was really into identifying characters with food, kind of the way uh, uh, like Wimpy is with hamburgers and also uh, Jughead and Popeye with his spinach. Yeah, Kent really dug that sort of thing. Oh, okay, we're, we're, we're getting to... Uh, part of what I animated, a rather uh, storyboarded. And uh, here we go. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep, did all this. Storyboarded, I mean, did not animate. The storyboards were, uh, you know, done uh, elsewhere. I was not in contact with any of the uh, overseas studios. I just did my work uh, in the studio, in, in the Deke studio in Los Angeles, and uh, a lot of work at home. Uh, 
we were given how long did we have to do a uh, yeah yeah uh it's weird tales like that uh, I, I did draw that i did all this uh let's see but uh yeah i uh, i forgot what i was gonna say but uh yeah 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 we got we got this this uh, seems to take place mainly at night and then well we got the day again so uh, i i i don't know what it was but uh yeah there yeah, here we go uh yeah and a horizon line on the bottom and the characters on top of it kent uh, suggested that too he was really into that it was a good idea and uh for dinner tonight. Yeah, try to give a, uh, put across story points as, uh, you know, graphically as possible uh, with the mother rising up in front of the props. No, no fancy stuff, just uh, telling the story very frankly, very bluntly right then and there. And, uh, okay, now we got Sonic. He's, uh, I, I, uh, I eliminated on the on the uh, uh, storyboard all background of that. Sometimes I have the characters just standing in uh, in a spotlight uh, for dramatic effect, and occasionally here you see uh, the scene dissolving into a color card, like the green did just right there, and uh, uh, that was that was my imp input too. I just wanted to uh, give this off the wall kind of. Uh, dramatic, uh, you know, overly uh, sincere sense to it. Okay, yeah, now we got uh, the bad guys. <clears throat> and yeah, I, I remember doing this too. Yeah. Yeah, very exaggerated yelling and, uh, you know. Let's see, yeah, so here's the uh, promotion thing. That was my idea. Uh, uh, the, the, the drawings, as we see them here, are much less broad than the ones I did. I, uh, the overseas studio tended to be uh, rather calm. Uh, and I wanted to have uh, Grounder get gently pushed away, but... Uh, you know, one way or another, I got exaggerated into a kick. And, uh, you know, here we go. Racing through the, uh, countryside with all the colors and bumps. And, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I enjoyed doing the, uh, you know, the sentimental stuff. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Sonic rising up, changing his body. I, uh, I like to do that sort of thing. Never, never could get used to those flesh-colored uh, arms, though. I, you know, not my favorite. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're in uh, silent uh, black and white land, and uh, yeah, Sonic with the lump. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were uh, all fans of. Uh, Old time cartoons, you know. Thirties, forties, and fifties, and comic books from the same period. And uh, yeah, we really laid on the slapstick. They don't. That that that's not done a lot now. Uh, it's. I think it's something where the uh, the people, uh, you know, running the networks and even the studios don't want to deal with it. I think they're uh, frightened by it. They don't want any uh, surprises, you know, springing up at them. Very concerned. So this kind of show, you know, as uh, unimpressed as I am with it, frankly, would not be made today. Uh, it wouldn't be the same because uh, we were doing everything off the cuff. And uh, by that, I mean, there was not time, a lot of time to do a deliberate uh, I'm not aware of a lot of censorship going on with the syndicated series. So uh, we, we were just going through and adding what we wanted and uh, 
Back in those days, you were free to take the script and spin gags off of it, which they don't do now because the writer is king and always get the last word. Uh, but, but back then, we were changing a lot of stuff and adding action where there was none. Yeah, okay, uh, that, that kind of stuff, the spiral and the, uh, the spotlight. Uh, yeah, I was, I was pleased with those. That's good. The animation here is uh, it's not not bad. They're not throwing in a lot of shrugs and stuff, which is what I couldn't stand about it. All right, no, uh, yeah, marching in and uh, probably looking goose stepping and uh, you know, Heil. And, uh, yeah. Sneaker to the magnetic sneaker yeah, we got, uh, uh, yeah, he's doing the salute as well. Uh, the World War II salute of a dictator. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Note that, uh, you know, these props make, don't make, they're not high tech. They're, they're just there to tell the story. There, there is no, uh, yeah, Robotnik's butt. Uh, th th there is no, uh, complexity at all. Like, like, yeah, that button and, and stuff. Everything's simple just to tell the story and nothing to give the animators uh, undue headaches. Because uh, the job then was just to get it out. Get it out, make it simple. Uh, we were going to do all the storyboards in L.A., but uh, I think Deke, the studio, uh, wanted to cut down on costs, and we were told later that uh, half of the storyboards were going to Canada. So that was that. Um, okay, we got... Uh, yeah, yeah. Upshot of uh, Robotnik here. And, uh, you know, tails and rounder, you know, being stupid as usual. And, uh, yeah. yeah, have a character throw stuff. Uh, okay, well, uh, we characters run. Uh, Antron, uh, Antron Manugian, there it is, was. Uh, like a, a, a production person on the uh, Sonic show, so uh, I threw in his name there on the can of applesauce. And we had fun. And, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. You know the thing with that, uh, that brick? I had wanted, uh, uh, entre or rather I wanted uh, <clears throat> Robotnik to pull that out by obscuring his eye uh, with his hand and then, you know, holding the bird very quickly, but they timed it slow and it's, it's grosser than I had intended. But, uh, whatever. And, uh, yes, but certainly exaggerated here, emphasized. And, uh, you know, we got Flatnik. And, uh, you know, Tails and Ground are up to their, uh, the classic comedy stylings. And, uh, waiting. Yeah, here we go. Excuse me? That fake postman who was just here forgot this special delivery thing. Yeah, here's Sonic again pulling another trick that uh, a half witted mule would uh, be able to see. And, uh, you know, squeezed together, twisted together. Sonic squeezing the letter and the, the envelope and the letter coming out. Uh, Robotnik, rather, uh, Grounder's uh, big chest and torso here. Uh, those were not in the script. Just, just making everything as, uh, you know, broad as possible. And then the thing comes down. And uh, at first, uh, the script had uh, uh, Grounder saying, uh, what was it, go play in traffic, which, which is not a great line. 
But uh, the script, uh, it was cut out because, uh, well, it, in, it, it encourages danger. So, uh, you know, they changed it. Uh, you know, not badly. It's cool. And, uh, yeah, we got the, uh, the sentimental ending here with, uh, you know, the characters bonding. And, uh, you know, everything's cool. Sonic is uh, not a touchy-feely guy. Tails is really saddened by that, but, uh, you know, they, they have an understanding. And Nookie time. And uh, ends with Tails, uh, you know, laughing it up. That was, uh, that was okay. Um, let's see, just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, I uh, have uh, my uh, a web presence. I have a Patreon page. Just look at my name under Patreon. And uh, my, uh, my site for uh, uh, my menu for, uh, let's see, all of uh, the work I have on the web, I'm just checking right now, is, uh, let's see, it's Milton Knight Site Menu, all one word, Milton Knight Site, S-I-T-E-M-E-N-U dot blogspot dot com, and that'll tell you all the pages I have up and all the things that you can see of my own work, and some of it even has a robotic. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was for the pilot. The end. Hi, this is Melton Knight, again, uh, artist on Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and doing a commentary on another uh, episode of the show. Uh, we have the opening here, Ed Love. A, 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 who was an animator forever, worked on Tom and Jerry, and was uh, key man uh, at uh, Hanna-Barbera. Uh, animated some of these uh, scenes. Uh, let's see, here we got the, uh, the dots all over the background, a lot of textures. He, I think he animated this scene. Um, some of it uh, was done overseas, and some of it was done here. There, there's another scene of his. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I am very proud to say that he animated uh, some of my layouts on the trailer as well. And uh, we're getting into this Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, Zubotnik is this episode, uh, which was uh, one of my... Uh, that gag didn't come across well. With the, with the underwear, couldn't even tell what was going on, which is kind of typical. Bad timing. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, when we, uh, the designs were done by, uh, of the miscellaneous characters, were done by Eddie, not Eddie Fitzgerald, uh, uh, Gary Paul Terry and uh, Mike Fontanelli. Uh, let's see, oh, these, uh, these characters here, uh, were all patterned after the 1940s comic books by, uh, Jim Tyre. We were all into Jim Tyre. That hippo certainly is. Uh, the bunny, maybe, as well. The next thing I knew, Lisa vanished. As it turned out, she'd merely gone to the bathroom. However... Chill, Mildred. The point is, there's a mad mummy snatcher on the loose. First things first. I need reliable eyes but yeah, to give me a you got, uh, of the there's story. that uh, stork or whatever it is okay. from Tails' exactly. new home. Like? You know, it's uh, good to reuse the designs, don't waste time. Uh, those guys with the heads, uh, I, uh, they're there for my designs. I designed characters like that for the, uh, the pilot show. Everybody's gone. A pair of gloves? Yeah, nothing but shoes, socks, gloves, and uh, undershorts. And, uh, yeah, naturally, uh, they uh, put hearts on them because uh, hearts are embarrassing. Uh, and they're comedy. They're comedy shorts. And, uh, let's see. I, I, had, I did not storyboard uh, this first half. Uh, but, uh... 
Let's see, everybody pretty much did their own uh, sections. There was not a lot of cross-pollination. So, so, yeah, okay. Now we uh, have uh, Robotnik the Hunt... Uh, Z Z Robotnik? No, 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 Catella. The Huntress, I think this was Kent Butterworth's design. Uh, let's see. And she brings along her own uh, fanfare, which uh, kind of didn't work. Uh, the sound cutting uh, wasn't clear, but yeah. Catella, who's uh, a lot of people's favorites. I, uh, I did uh, a couple of uh, commissions of the character. And a very simple uh, spaceship. And uh, what's his name? I forgot what his name. Checkers, Bonkers. Yeah, uh, he, he's a good design. I certainly didn't do him. But I thought it was a cute character. I designed the uh, Robotnik lair. And, uh, and the backgrounds, I uh, kind of did the master uh, shots. And uh, they built up on it. So, yeah. Robotnik in a bubble bath. Very typical, uh, embarrassing uh, situation for him, but uh, he's so uh, proud of himself that uh, he doesn't care. He thinks he's beautiful in the bathtub. Very sad man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's he gonna do? Is this, is this the one where he gets nude? I I don't remember. In fact, I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah. Wear it with great comfort, our great leader. For years, I waited for the day. Yeah, that was uh, ingenious of uh, having a Robotnik walk away in the background while uh, Scratch is talking. Good storytelling. Way of making it interesting without uh, making it so lavish that it, uh, you know, delays production. They don't really care about that. Uh, Nowadays, they give themselves all sorts of problems, and it really doesn't even matter. I mean, you can tell these things simply, and, uh, you know, it, it even works out better. I'm all for uh, small budgets, and I'm all, frankly, uh, censorship does not bother me. I don't have a problem with it, because then we can think of uh, even more clever ways of getting the point across. It's, it's a challenge that I like, and... Uh, well, what can I say? A lot of people, a lot of animators, cartoonists, just uh, don't dig challenge. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Right now, I don't know if I've got much to say. It's, uh, you know, the plot. That's all. Let's see. Yeah, the rocks eh, didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah again. Okay. Whatever you want. I'll put up these flyers. Maybe someone will recognize Tail. Missing, missing child. That's uh, an unusual cow. I, I think that uh, they would have just made them round circles. But somebody else was behind it. You know, it's nice to see a variety here. <laughs> um, that that's another thing. <clears throat> Everything wasn't nailed down uh, where, you know, like all the Simpsons looked the same because they were in the same universe. The drawings uh, and designs uh, in these went all over the place because uh, there was nobody saying no. Uh, Kent Butterworth, uh, you know, liked cartoons and uh, old classic cartoons as much as we all did. Mm. And uh, he wanted stuff weird. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, weird animation again. Didn't really move with the uh, 
Have you seen this fellow? You know, background, kind of jiggle around in the air. Okay. Get me out of here. I'm scared. Yeah. Got that sky. Got that uh, coming, little pal. spotted sky. Very, very freewheeling style. I mean, you, you just can't predict. That's probably one reason why uh, people remember it. Yeah. Chasing the ship. Here it stop. Oh, he's gone. Yep. There he is. There's that uh, lair again. Uh, I think this is where my storyboard starts. The second half. I think I did the whole second half. If if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself. If I come up on a place I don't recognize. But it's, it, it seems that way. I did all this. Again, I say storyboard. I emphasize that. Uh, they made some things uh, very little. Um, like, I wanted uh, Robotnik to uh, just up, well, be in the frame with nothing behind him. And then when he leaves, Scratch and Grounder are behind it. Things like that. Uh, the animators overseas just, just, they, 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 they couldn't see. They wondered why. And so they would, you know, put them in anyway. Uh, yeah, I remember this. Uh, uh, the monkey's ears are like uh, Mighty Mouse ears. Oh, Coconuts, that's that's his name, yeah. Oh, that was a strange too with his binoculars attached to the bottom of the ship, but uh, they're still in perspective, like he isn't even touching them, so uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let's see, they're being stupid. And here's Catella with her uh, fanfare record. Uh, here we go. Big old background castle, the bell. I remember all this. I am Catella. The one Catella comes in with her uh, huge mammary time. glands. And uh, they have all the characters uh, shrugging a lot, which I don't know. It was kind of, of a default uh, posing. Um, I mean, like, I, they, they put all that in. I guess there was nothing else for the characters to do. So everything is uh, actuated uh, by a shrug, accentuated. Mm. 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 That's cute. That's cool. It's fun. Yeah, people always remember uh, this sequence with uh, Catella turning into a heart. Uh, at first, uh, in the storyboard, I had her heart, uh, an x-ray and her heart beating. And then, uh, well, well, her heart was fro uh, like melted a block of ice and beating, she, she got larger, larger like the heart. But I guess uh, they didn't want a close-up of her chest, so they uh, uh, can't just make her turn into a heart. Boing! You know, maybe that's an improvement, maybe not. But uh, yeah, we got, uh, I uh, did all this uh, stuff with her wrestling with him and stuff, bouncing up and down. Uh, we had fun. Um, some people were surprised uh, about our getting away with it. I remember uh, the rushes came back and like everybody was giggling at, uh, you know, this, this whole interaction. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could do stuff. And it's, it's off the cuff. It's kind of like uh, spontaneous. Not a big deal. Yeah. It's it's an S and M thing they have going here. What can I yeah, I I, I kind of stole that gag from a Popeye cartoon where uh, the villain Bluto type uh, 
is thrown into a wall and becomes a, uh, you know, an Egyptian figure. Is that all? It's as good as done. And uh, here's Catella. She's gesticulating around and shrugging. And yeah, yeah, they're they're going at it hot and heavy. And uh, yeah, here's uh, Sonic. Uh, do, doing the uh, the speed gags, you know, kind of like the Road Runner. Here's uh, the doll tails with his mouth behind uh, the ropes. And uh, yeah, they're, they're doing their thing. They're doing all the weird posing. A lot of that was mine. And uh, yeah, here's here's Sonic. He's gonna shrug all the time. You know, so so shrugs a lot. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that, that, that scene with the tracking up and down the rope uh, was a lot like... Oh, there's uh, Sonic changing his body again. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot like a Fleischer cartoon called Bimbo's Initiation, where he... Uh, looks up and he finds out that the trap is above him. We we like to do that. Well done, Catella. I'm truly impressed. And so they've trapped him. They're all, you know, and they're going at it again. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, did a very calm walk on uh, Catella. Which, uh, in a way, it makes sense. In a, in, in a way, I'd like to see a little bit more character in it. But, you know, this is TV. Music to gloat by. And this scene is uh, remarkably fancy. Uh, you know, it's <clears throat> it's kind of good, actually. I didn't expect uh, this much animation on it at all. Uh, the studios, the overseas studios, are paid by the episode they're 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 not paid according to work or uh, you know time uh, somehow they uh, they made it work since since uh, they were guaranteed for the episode they would do anything to get it done uh, and uh, here here are the comic book characters again the patterned after Jim Tyre uh, Familiar Terry Toons animator uh, with his own idiosyncratic style. But I'll get you guys out of here pronto. Stand back. Hey, thanks, Sonic. Oh yeah, I did all that. I storyboarded all that with them doing these comic things, uh, getting out of, go, going into the hole. Uh, like, like put, put in as many, uh, you know, gags as uh, humanly possible, just, just to make it viewable and to make it interesting and, uh, you know, hopefully make it funny. Okay, uh, you know, she's carrying on and uh, she's carrying him and it's going on. You know, she, uh, she's like uh, overcome with the powers of lust. And uh, yeah, that bouncing up and down on him, yeah, yeah, that, that got a lot of laughs at the uh, studio. And uh, let's see. Yeah, here comes uh, Sonic is uh, some sort of a, a pastor or something. And uh, yeah, I got evil tales here. Yep. For stuff around. Got uh, best man made of honor. Okay, uh, you could read that sign. That was cool. What a lovely couple. Got very exaggerated drawing. Uh, zipping around. I I like these close-ups. They were uh, close to what I had done. Uh, what I put on the storyboard. Yes, yes. Crying and telling bad jokes. If you can call this a joke, I don't know, whatever. And uh, I put in uh, Sonic's uh, shadow doing various things. 
in cutting back and forth uh, to various abuses of Robotnik. And uh, then what we got here is Mama Robotnik bursting in and the whole fight that uh, she and Catella have were uh, my doing. At first it was like a few insulting lines of dialogue and then Catella says, that enough, that's enough, I'm leaving. But to me, that wasn't enough. So I put in this whole, uh, you, know, you know, karate, whatever you want to call it, fight here. And uh, they did it. You know, it was, it was cool, it was okay. And they dug that. And uh, Catella getting smashed into the heart again and having a very inappropriate uh, facial expression. But uh, yeah, that was my idea again. Yes. Uh, righty. If you marry her, I promise I'll yeah, it was a uh, cool idea having his mother have a uh, mustache. Uh, you know, it, it was weird. It didn't make sense. It was, it was just just another. Uh, humorous thing. Now they land and they form a, a tombstone, which normally is another no-no. Uh, and may maybe it wouldn't be a no-no now because, you know, they're into death more and, uh, you know, skeletons and, you know, that kind of stuff. So maybe that would go by, but uh, at this time, putting in anything suggesting death was uh, unusual and, uh, rather distasteful. It was pushing the envelope. And uh, here we go. Mama Robotnik uh, getting mad and once more subjecting uh, Robotnik, the great would-be dictator, to a figure of fun and uh, an object of abuse. Yeah, just like uh, the adult we hated as children. And uh, we got a little... Uh, gag shot of the moon, which is patterned after the uh, band leader Paul Whiteman, the king of jazz. He appeared as a, uh, a moon face in his own movie. That was way back in 1930. So yeah, stay tuned. Now we got another uh, rationale for the show. Uh, put in a little lesson at the end to uh, show that it's not all just, you know, just plain nonsense. We're going to teach you a little lesson. You know, got to do what they were all doing it at the time. I don't really mind. And, uh, yeah, so don't you be like that, kids, because uh, that that's an uncool thing to do. And yeah, we got the end credits. Everybody's there. And uh, this footage was uh, done by uh, Ed Love for the story. I mean, for the uh, pilot. Uh, let's see, I, I didn't uh, storyboard this. But yeah, you know, there, there's everybody. And uh, this is the end of uh, Zubotnik, another episode of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Hi, everyone. This is Melton Knight, artist of... Uh, on uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog doing commentary on this clip. I uh, I think this, yes, this was used on the program, but these are rushes before they added uh, real sound. Um, the sound music was done afterward. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the pattern you know, we, that, that is most familiar is doing the sound first. Uh, the dialogue may have been here, but uh, the music was added later. So uh, I did uh, storyboard on uh, a lot of this stuff, and uh, it was uh, adopted into uh, layout and animation uh, overseas. So, uh, yes, this is the debut of uh, uh, Scratch and Grounder. And uh, you see a lot of uh, Robotnik butt jokes. Uh, I told them to exaggerate it. 
I didn't intend it to be a sex symbol, which is the way a lot of people seem to feel. But uh, yeah, I thought of him as ridiculous. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, he is uh, the uh, adult, the teacher uh, who uh, you hated when you were a kid. So yeah, he is not, uh, he is not a role model whatsoever. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's a dialogue missing here. I uh, had him in the storyboard saying, ouch a doodle but uh, I don't think that was used. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I did some ma uh, master shots of the background to decide how it would look. I did the layer thing with uh, him on. There's a, uh, a, uh, a camera mistake, a cell level mistake. I'm sure they uh, corrected it later, but uh, this stuff uh, was very formal and off the cuff. Uh, there weren't a million people, you know, approving. Uh, it was uh, still loose at this date. Things changed a lot. And uh, let's see, yeah. Uh, I storyboarded all this. I, uh, I, I really don't remember why this was sent to me. Well, I wanted it real bad. So uh, Kent Butterworth, the director, did me a favor and uh, captured whatever... Uh, advanced sequences he could get. Uh, Sonic was my first job storyboarding. I animated, and I guess I could say I did layout on uh, at Cool World for Ralph Bakshi before that. Uh, I would worked with Kent Butterworth on Cool World, and uh, he hired me for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, b but uh, this was my uh, longest term, my uh, doing long sequences and, uh, and longer char characters. And that's uh, Coconuts. Don't forget to check my patron at Milton Knight. Anyway, thanks and uh, have a good night. Hello again, friends. Uh, this is Milton Knight again, uh, artist working on... Uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, doing commentary on the pilot film of this uh, series. Uh, I think it was used to uh, sell to advertisers uh, because I believe the show was already sold uh, and going to air. But uh, yes, yes, uh, he, we have a lot of uh, here are designs by Gary Paul Terry. You see the Tin Man there. A lot of them are uh, derived from. Uh, Osamu Tezuka's cartoons, and we have a lot of animation by Ed Love, uh, a familiar, famous animator, worked on Tom and Jerry, and uh, played a big role in uh, Hanna-Barbera's product. Uh, the Bull, designed uh, by uh, Gary Paul Terry, again, laid out. And uh, the, the object of this uh, film, films like this pilot's, are to uh, make the series look real good, to sell to whomever. So you'll see a lot of animation here that is a lot more deluxe than, uh, you know, what the show would eventually be. Here's uh, another sequence that I uh, wrote and laid out. Um, some of this was animated overseas, and uh, whatever Kent Butterworth could animate, have animated here, he did. Uh, let's see. Mm, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, he was very big on hiring uh, old-time guys, uh, previous generation guys. So you have uh, Gary Owens doing the narration, and you have Ed Love animating. And this, this was another one of my uh, scenes. Actually, I animated on quite a few of these scenes and, and wrote them as well. Got the very stylized backgrounds here to uh, create another world. There's Ed Love on the rabbits. And I don't know who did this scene. You know, it's cute. We got that. Messed them all up. And uh, let's see. Okay, this was uh, eventually used at the end of the program under the credits. Uh, 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 most of it is Ed Love, I think. But uh, yeah, yeah, a little sneak there. And... Uh, 
Sonic is gone. Boom. Yes. Uh, is Robotnik uh, humiliated again? Uh, Flatten the smithereens. Uh, that, that was great. And uh, here's some more I'd love and more designs and storyboards of mine. Uh, you'll notice here the technology is, uh, oh yeah, I designed the other uh, cone-shaped people here and, and laid this out, uh, this whole business with the underwater. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard Con Sonic can't swim. I don't know. I was just uh, doing what they told me. Uh, the technology, you'll see the machines and stuff, is not trying to be high-tech. Everything is for laughs you know, circles and cones and curves uh, just to get the story told. There's nothing, uh, you know, scientific about it. Just stuff to make it look good, put the point across and be very funny. It's like, what is that machine? Who knows? But it, it tells the story. It's a pump of some sort. Got more Ed Love here on uh, my layout. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Sonic does his thing. Yes. More and more Ed Love. He was fast. He uh, animated a lot of the Smurfs. Uh, some people say that he was like responsible for more than half of that series when they were still animating it here. He uh, knew his stuff. Sonic at the Beach. Yeah. There are uh, technical issues. Uh, you know, uh, misplacement of cells and stuff. I, I I think this was done really fast. And when you get right down to it, you know, it it's not as important as being entertaining, I think. Uh, here we go. Uh, I animated that, laid that out, and animated uh, this as well, as well as uh, him falling down and drilling into the ground. And someone took over and did that uh, business with the uh, the stand, the target thing. And once again, uh, Robotnik loses, trying to get across the idea that this is a gag-oriented series, an action-oriented series, and, uh, and funny. Uh, this, this is a rush that I was given. There are no sound effects and no music. Uh, and... I don't know if uh, it was ever fully used. Some of this animation, some of these sequences were used in uh, later episodes. Why use it? But I have not seen it, uh, the, the pilot itself, outside of this form. I wonder if it was ever, like, you know, completed. It sold the show or it sold it to advertisers or whoever needed to see it. It worked. Uh... So, yeah, mummified and, uh, you know, crash, boom, bam. Poor Robotnik. Well, poor, I don't know. He's a, he's a would-be dictator, right? But somehow he comes across as uh, likable enough, I suppose, um, because he's so foolish, I guess. And yeah, you yeah, got the stylized wallpaper type stuff back there. And uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, there's his logo. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to point out that uh, my uh, web address, my Patreon address is at Melton Knight. Uh, and uh, let's see, under Patreon.com. And my... Uh, my uh, site menu tells you what's on every, uh, what is on uh, my art on the web. That is Milton Knight, S I T E M E N U dot blogspot dot com. And uh, yeah, that's it. Teaching you a little lesson there to show the, it's not a waste of time. And there we go. That's the pilot. See ya.